Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be going over all the instructions in the LC3 and trying to derive their control signal sequences and register transfer descriptions. If you want to skip to any specific instruction, then check the video description where I'll have links to each of the instructions covered in this video. The video is probably going to be pretty long, so excuse me if I make some mistakes. Otherwise, we're going to start straight off here with the fetch instruction, which comes from the six phases of the instruction cycle. So the goal of the fetch instruction is to read our next instruction out of memory and write it into the instruction register so that we can execute it. So looking at that here, here's the register transfer description. We can see we're going to be accessing memory at the, at the contents of the PC. So one thing to remember, the PC, which is our program counter, is always pointing to the address of our next instruction. <coughs> so that's why we want to access memory at the address of our next instruction or the contents of the PC and then write that data into the IR or the instruction register, since the instruction register always holds our current instruction. So looking at the data path here, we have the PC up at the top, and so we're gonna take the contents of the PC or that address of our next instruction, put it onto the main bus and send it into the MAR so that we can tell memory where we want to access it or read from, and then we're gonna read out of memory and then write its data into the IR so that we can finish up the fetch instruction. So. To start, what we want to do is looking at this register transfer description, try and just get the address inside this memory access or the stuff on the right side of this arrow to start. So we can see on the innermost parentheses we have, we want to get the contents of the PC and we want to send it over to memory. So looking at this, we have the PC up here at the top. And so our goal is getting the contents of the PC over to memory right here. So we can see that the first signal that we assert is gate.pc. And we can see we already do that because the data in the PC or that address of our next instruction flows up this line right here and goes up to a gate.pc. And this gate is stopping the data from the PC from writing onto the bus. But since we want to write the contents of the PC onto the main bus so we can send it over to memory, we want to assert gate.pc as our first signal. So here we assert gate.pc and that lets the contents of the PC go onto the main bus. So now, since we have the contents of the PC on the main bus, if we follow it down, it'll go into the MAR. So that, since that's where we want to write it, so we can tell memory where we're accessing. So the signal we have to assert to tell it to write into the MAR is load.mar right here. So you can see that the next signal we give is load.mar. So after that, now that we told memory where we're accessing it, we actually have to tell memory to perform the read. So we can see here that we would assert the signal memory.enable for reading, or the capital R. So the third signal we give is memory.enable read, but since memory doesn't read instantly, unlike most of the rest of this, it's fairly quick. Memory takes a lot longer than the rest. You have to then say, wait for ready. So that's not another signal. It's just saying that we have to wait until the memory's done reading before we can continue. So once memory's done reading, we need to send our data over to the MDR so that we can eventually write it onto the main bus and into the IR. So here we can see there's a line coming out of memory over to the MDR. But one thing to note is that there's a line both coming from the main bus into the MDR and a line coming from memory into the MDR. So because of that, the MDR is going to need a multiplexer to decide which line is actually writing into the MDR. So it's not shown in this diagram, but there's actually a multiplexer right about here next to the MDR, which decides whether to take the data from memory or take data from the bus. So here we need to tell the MDR MUX or the multiplexer that we're selecting memory, or we want to take this line from memory and write it into the MDR. So after we tell the MDR MUX to select memory, the next signal we want to give is load.mdr, and this will let us write into the MDR or the memory data register. And we want to do this so that we can eventually write it onto the bus and into the IR. So now that we've written the memory read that we did, we've written the instruction that we read from memory into the MDR. The next signal we have to give is gate.mdr so that we can write that data onto the main bus. So we see here, the next signal we give is gate.mdr. So with that, we have our instruction on the main bus and all we have to do is put it into the IR. So if we follow the line up here, you can see load.ir, and that'll let you write that data into the IR. 
And so that'll finish up the fetch instruction. One thing you'll note though is I wrote a couple other signals in here, right below signal the gate.pc signal that we had and the uh, before the load.mar signal. And so what these two signals do is they make sure that we increment the PC before we continue. Since the professor went over this in lecture, I thought I'd add these signals to this printout. So before what we did is we sent the contents of the PC straight through the gate over to the MAR and then continued to load.mar and do all of our work to perform the fetch. One thing that should happen before that though is right after we put the contents of the PC into contents of the PC onto the main bus, we actually want to increment the PC so it's always pointing at our next instruction. So you can see here that the line from the PC also splits off and goes right and goes into an incrementer. And that incrementer is sent into the PC mux, which will then let us write it back into the PC. And so what we want to do is we send it through the incrementer, and then we need to give the signal PC mux selects, and it would select the incrementer. Forgot to write it in. Incrementer. So that'll let the data from the incrementing incrementer to go through the PC mux, and then we can do load.pc, which will write that into the PC. So once again, that's just to make sure that the PC is always pointing at the next instruction. I added that in because when the instructor went, when the professor went over the fetch phase, he had those two signals. So essentially, that is the fetch, that is the fetch instruction. Once again, all we did was write, we took the constant of the PC, used it to access memory, read from memory at that location, and wrote into the IR. And all of that was to fetch our next instruction. Okay, so the next instruction we're going over is the add instruction, and we're going to be going over an addition between two registers, SR1 and SR2. So to start, these red, if I mark an, a control signal in red, it means that you're not wrong if you give that signal, but it's also unnecessary to give that signal because it is normally set to that, so we don't need to worry about it. But they're shown here, so I marked them in red. If you didn't put them, you'd still get credit on the test. Otherwise, though, you're not wrong if you do put them. So yeah. Okay, so to start for the add instruction, let's look at the register transfer description. So we can see that we're adding source register 1 plus source register 2 and writing it into a destination register. So here, in the actual data path, we can see source register 1 is right there, and source register 2 is right there. And we know that we would perform the addition using the ALU, or the arithmetic logic unit. We would then send that addition onto the main bus so that we can write it back into the destination register or back into this register file. So that's what we're going to be doing right now. So to start, as always, look at the right side of the register transfer description and try and get this data or this operation to be finished and then move to the left side of the register transfer description. So here, Let's go and get SR1 and add it to SR2. So we see SR1 right here, and it goes into the ALU, which is where we're going to perform that addition. But we also see here that we have SR2, which can go to the ALU, but first it has to go through the SR2 multiplexer. So ignoring the first red signal, which I said was unnecessary to put, but it's not wrong. So just doing signal 2 as our first signal, we see SR2 mux selects SR2 out. So that is the SR2 mux right here is selecting this line from SR2 out to be sent through the multiplexer so it can go to the ALU. So we select the SR2 line to go through the multiplexer. And so now we have SR1 and SR2 inside the ALU. And so we need to tell the ALU that we want to perform an addition between the two. So the signal you have to give to tell the ALU which operation to perform is ALUK. So we assert ALUK and say it selects add. So we're just telling it which signal we're asserting or which operation we want it to perform. So after that, SR1 will be added to SR2 or the contents of those will be added together and they'll be sent out this line coming out of the ALU. And then from there, we wanna write that onto the main bus. So the first signal we have to give is gate.alu, which you can see here, gate.alu. That'll let the data from that addition go onto the main bus. We can then follow that data back up here and back into the register file where we're going to be writing into the destination register. And the signal you have to give to write into there is load.reg. And you can see once again, I ignored the signal five since it is there, but it's unnecessary because that is how 
it's normally set to those bits anyways, so I'm ignoring them. So anyways, the only necessary signals are 2, 3, 4, and 6, and that is how the, edi the first edition instruction is performed. Okay, so moving on to the other form of an addition instruction, we're going to be doing an addition between SR1 and the sign extension of bits 4 through 0. So this is the addition between SR1 and some immediate value, or an immediate 5. So to start, we're going to look at the register descri transfer description as always and find all these values and try and get them first, or the values to the right of the arrow. So here we have SR1 right there, from which we know from our last instruction. And next we want to get the sign extension of IR bits 4 through 0. So the first thing to do is let's go find the IR. We know that that's right there in the data path, and we want to get its bits 4 through 0. If we follow the line coming out of the IR right here, we can see there's bits 4 through 0. They get sign extended, which is what we want, and then they get sent over to the SR2 MUX, which will let them go to the ALU, which is what we want. So, the first thing we want to do is make sure that this SR2 MUX is selecting IR bits 4 through 0. So if we follow this line right here, goes through the sign extender for 4 through 0, goes into the SR2 MUX, and so SR2 MUX selects sign extension of IR bits 4 through 0. And that's going to be the first signal we need to assert. After that, we can see that the data from SR1 is already being sent into the ALU, and we already told the SR2 MUX to select the bits from the IR to send through its line. So now both of the inputs to the ALU are what we want, and we just need to perform that addition operation. So we need to tell ALUK to select add so we can perform an addition. So that's the next signal is ALUK selects add. After that, the data comes out of the ALU and we send it, we want to send it onto the main bus so we can eventually write it back into the register file. So the next signal we have to give is gate.alu so that we can let that result of the addition go onto the main bus. So you can see here there is gate.alu. Now that we have the result of the addition written onto the main bus, it goes back into the register file, and all we need to do is write it. And so to write into the, into the destination register, we have to give the signal load.reg. And so you can see here, load.reg is the last signal we need to give. So that is the addition between a register and an immediate value. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is very similar to those add instructions. We're now going to be doing and. So, you can see here we're performing an AND between S, the contents of SR1 and the contents of SR2. And it turns out that these signals and the register transfer description turn out to be very similar to the AD instructions, but the only thing that changes is that instead of selecting AD, we select AND with the ALU. Okay. So to go through it again, what you're going to end up doing is first look at the right side of the register transfer description and try and get the two values there. So we want to get the contents of SR1 and the contents of SR2, we want to send them to the ALU so that we can AND them. And then we want to write them back into the register file so we can write them into that destination register. So you can see here, the, value, the contents of SR1 are automatically sent straight to the ALU, so we don't have to do anything there. But then SR2 has to go through the SR2 MUX, and so we need to say SR2 MUX selects SR2 out. That'll let this line from SR2 go through the multiplexer and into the ALU. So now that the ALU successfully has the contents of SR1 and SR2 going into it, we just need to tell the ALUK to select AND, so we can tell it that we're performing the AND operation. With that, the results of that AND operation will go down this line right here, and we see that we need to assert gate.alu to let it ride onto the main bus, so we see here, gate.alu. After that, it'll travel along the main bus, and we just need to write it back into the destination register in the register file. So the only signal that we have left to give is load.reg to write it into this destination register in the register file. So as you can tell, that's very similar to add. The only thing that changed is that the ALUK is selecting AND rather than add this time. Okay, so the next instruction we're doing is another AND instruction, but this time we're doing an immediate value. So we're doing the immediate value immediate 5, just like we did for the add instruction. Once again, the control signals are going to be very similar to the add instruction. The only thing that changes is that the ALUK selects AND. So, to run through this one more time, what's going to happen is we look at the right side of the register transfer description and try and get all the stuff here to happen first. 
So we can see the first thing we want to get is the sign extension of its IR4 through 0, and we're going to AND that with the contents of SR1. So to AND something, we know we have to send it to the ALU, and so here we have the contents of SR1 can come down this line right here and go straight into the ALU, so there's no signal we have to give there. However, we need to get IR bits 4 through 0 and sign extend them and then send them to the ALU. So here's the IR, and if we want to get the bits 4 through 0 to it, of, the, of it, we can see that if we follow this line going up, it goes here and there's bits 4 through 0. It gets sign extended, and then it'll eventually get sent to the ALU. But first, it has to go through this SR2 MUX. And so the next signal we have to give, or the first signal we have to give, is SR2 MUX selects IR bits 4 through 0. So you can see here it selects IR bits 4 through 0 right there. That'll send it through the SR2 MUX and into the ALU. Now that we have both the contents of SR1 and the sign extension bits IR4 through 0 in the ALU, we just need to tell the ALUK to select the operation we're performing. So in this case, we say ALUK selects AND. After that, the content, the result of that operation goes out of the ALU, and then we want to send it onto the main bus. So we're going to have to assert gate.alu so that we can write onto the main bus. It'll get asserted and send that data onto the main bus, and then we just need to write it back into the register file. And to do that, we just need to assert load.reg. And so with that, we successfully performed an AND between a register and an immediate 5 value. Okay, so the last arithmetic logic instruction that we need to perform is the NOT instruction. So here, we can see that all we want to do in the register transfer description is we want to NOT the contents of SR1. So this apostrophe right here, if that's the right word, is saying that we want to NOT the contents of SR1. So what we're going to do, we want to look at the right side of the register transfer description and try and get that data first and then write it into the stuff on the left. So here we can see there's SR1 in the data path. If we follow that line down, it would go into the ALU, which is where we want to send it so that we can perform a NOT, since that's where the NOT would be performed. After that, we're going to send it back up to the register file so that we can write it back into that destination register. So the first signal we have to give is if we follow SR1 going into here, we don't need to worry about SR2 at all because all we need is SR1. We would tell the ALUK to select NOT since that's the first that's the operation we're performing, and so that will be the first control signal we have to give, is that ALUK selects NOT. So here, we have ALUK selects NOT. After that, the content, the result of that operation will be sent out of the ALU, and we want to write it onto the main bus. So before we can do that, we need to assert gate.alu to let that data onto the main bus. So you can see here we have gate.alu. After we've written that data onto the main bus, it'll travel up and around and into the, regis the register file, where we want to write it back into the destination register. And so to do that, the last signal we have to give is just load.reg. And so that is going to be the control signal sequence and register transfer description for the NOT instruction. OK, so the next instruction we're going to perform is the LEA instruction. So for LEA, all it's doing is it's loading an effective address. So it's not ever accessing memory. It's simply going to calculate an address using PC relative addressing and then write that into the destination register. So all we're loading is an address using PC relative addressing. So the, what we're going to end up doing is we look at, here's the register transfer description, which says we're writing into the destination register the contents of the PC plus the sign extension of IR bits 8 through 0. And IR bits 8 through 0 is that PC offset 9 that we have, which we use to create our effective address, which we're writing into the destination register. So as always, we're, we're going to start by looking at our register transfer description and figuring out what we need to get first to perform, to figure out the control signal sequences. So to start, we know we need to get the contents of the PC and add it to the sign extension of IR bits 8 through 0. So if we look for the PC in the data path, we can see it right here at the top. And so we want to get the contents of the PC and we want to add it with some contents from the IR. So here, if we follow the line coming out of the PC, we can see that it can either go onto the main bus or go somewhere else. We don't want to go onto the main bus, so we're going to send it to the right. And if we send it down, we can send it over to this adder 1 mux, which will eventually let it go into an adder, which is what we want. So the first signal we have to assert is adder 1 mux selects PC. 
And we can see once again, that's because we want to send the contents of the PC over this way through adder one mux and into this adder so that we can add it with some contents from the IR. So anyways, the first signal is adder one mux selects PC. That'll send the PC over to the adder. So the next thing we have to give is make the other input to the adder be bits IR eight through zero. So what we wanna do is right here we have the IR. We can see that it comes out right here and goes up right here where you can get its bits eight through zero. They go through a sign extender and then they go into adder two mux. So for adder two mux, the next signal we have to assert is adder two mux selects IR bits eight through zero. So with that, we've then sent both the contents of the PC into this adder and the sign extension of IR bits eight through zero into this adder. So with that, we then want to simply write that over into the register file. So coming out of this adder, we can see we have two options, either left or right. If we went right, we would end up going back into the PC, which isn't our goal. So we're gonna choose to go left. And so the next signal we have to give is that the MAR mux is going to select the address adder. That way we'll be able to write the data onto the bus and back into the destination register like we want. So as I said, we're gonna come out of the addition that we just did, and we're gonna tell the MAR mux to select the address adder. After that, we're going to want to get that data onto the main bus. So we once again have to assert a gate. So we're gonna do gate.marmux, that's right there. So the contents of our, our addition then goes on to the main bus, and then all we have to do is write it into the destination register. So if we follow the main bus, it goes into the register file right there, and we can assert load.reg to write it into the destination register. And so that would be the control signal sequence for the LEA instruction. Okay, so the next instruction we wanna perform is a load instruction. This is very similar to LEA, except for now we want to actually access memory at the effective address that we get using PC relative addressing. So as per usual, let's look at the register transfer description to start. We see that we're writing, we're accessing memory at the contents of the PC plus the sign extension of IR bits A through zero. So we're, we're accessing memory at the contents of the PC plus the sign extension of the PC offset nine. So that's gonna give our effective address where we're accessing memory, and we're gonna write the contents of that memory access into the destination register. So all it is is we're accessing memory at an address and then writing into a destination register. So as per usual, let's try and get our address first so that we can send it over to memory, read it, and then write into destination register. So you can see the first thing we wanna get is the PC plus the sign extension of IR bits eight through zero. So we can see up here on the data path, we have the PC and we want to eventually add that with IR bits eight through zero. So what we want to do is if we follow this line coming out of the PC, it goes up and around and over to this adder right here. So, but to send it into the adder, we first have to say that adder one mux selects the PC. So that's the first signal we want to give is adder one mux selects PC right there. The next signal we want to give, or the next thing we want to do is send IR bits eight through zero sign extended through this adder two mux and over through to the adder as well. So you can see here we have IR, it breaks off, but if you go this way, you can see bits eight through zero, which is what we want. They get sign extended and sent to the adder two mux. So the next signal we have to give is adder two mux selects the sign extension of IR bits eight through zero. After that, we can see that they go through the mux and into the adder. So they get their addition performed. We then see that if we want to write onto the main bus, we're gonna go over this way and over through the MAR mux. So once again, we hit a multiplexer. So we have to say that now the MAR mux selects the address adder. So the MAR mux selects the address adder. We then wanna write onto the main bus. So here we have to assert gate.MAR mux. That's our next signal, gate.MAR mux. That'll let us put our effective address that we just created onto the main bus. If we follow that main bus going around the page, we can see that we can then write it into the memory, access, memory address register, which will tell memory where we're gonna be reading from. So the next signal we have to give is load.mar, so we can write the effective address we just created into the MAR. Now that we have the MAR pointing at the address where we wanna access memory, we just have to assert memory.enable for a read. So we can see here memory.enable for a read. 
That'll let us read from memory at the address, which we just put into the MAR. When you read from memory, you have to remember that you need to wait for memory to be ready. That's because memory is slower than the rest of this stuff, so you need to wait for it to be ready before you can continue. So that's why we write wait for ready. The next thing that we need to do is we want to take that contents that we just read and eventually write it over into our destination register up here. So we can see what we want to do is send it through the MDR onto the main bus and then up to the register file. So we want to take the contents of our memory read and if we follow this line right here we can see it goes into the MDR. But what you'll notice is that the MDR has two separate lines going into it here, which means that it has to have a multiplexer. This diagram doesn't show it, but there's actually a multiplexer right about here pointing into the MDR that decides whether to take data from the bus or from memory. So what we have to do is tell that invisible multiplexer here that we want to select the data from memory. So you can see here we say MDR mux selects memory. So after we do that, the data from memory will be going into the MDR, and all we have to do is load.mdr, or assert this signal right here, to tell it to write the data from memory into the MDR or the memory data register. After that, the data from the MDR is going to try and get onto the bus, but to do that, it needs to assert the signal gate.mdr. So you can see that's the next signal we assert here, gate.mdr. Finally, after doing that, it'll go onto the main bus, and all we have to do is follow that over to the register file, and then assert load.reg to write it into the register file. So we have load.reg. So with that, that's the load instruction. So let's move on and do LDI. So LDI is going to be very similar to load, except for we need to access memory twice. So looking at the register transfer description here, we see that we're accessing memory once and then accessing memory again, but this time at the effective address that we created similarly to load, which is the PC relative addressing effective address. So we have PC plus sign extension of IR bits eight through zero. After we do those two memory accesses, we're gonna write the data into the destination register just like we did for load. So as per usual, let's try and get our address first, this PC plus sign extension of IR bits 8 through 0, and send that over to the MAR so we can access memory at that location. So let's start by getting the contents of the PC, so we can get PC right here, and we want to add it to the sign extension of IR bits 8 through 0. So here we'll get the PC, and if we follow this line going around, you can see that it goes into an adder 1 mux, which will eventually let it go into an adder, which is what we want. So since we're going into a multiplexer, we have to assert the signal. So we have to assert adder one mux selects PC. And so that'll let this line from the PC go through this adder one mux. The other thing we want to do is figure out the other input to this adder. And so we know that we want to get IR bits eight through zero. So here we have the IR and you can see that it comes up right here and you can see there's bits eight to zero and they go through the sign extender just like we want. And so through that sign extender, we see that it hits the adder two mux. So we then have to assert adder two mux select sign extension of IR bits eight through zero. After that, they'll go through the adder two mux into our adder, which is great, that's what we want. So then taking the effective address we just created, or the address we just created from adding those, the PC plus the sign extension of IR bits eight through zero, we follow the line coming out of that adder and we can see we want to write it onto the main bus so we can send it over to the MAR. So we want to go left right here and up and through the MAR mux. So since we hit a multiplexer, we have to say MAR mux selects the address adder. That'll let the contents of our address addition through this MAR mux. The next thing we have to do to write onto the main bus is assert gate.mar. So you can see here that our next signal is gate.mar mux. After that, you'll see that we can follow this main bus down and around over to the MAR, which is where we want to write that address. So to write into the MAR, you need to assert load.mar. With that, the MAR is now pointing at the location of memory where we want to perform our first access. So to do our first read from memory, we need to assert memory.enable for a read. So you can see that signal right here, mem enable read right at the bottom. So with that, that'll let memory read, but since memory reads are slower than other operations in the computer, we need to remember to write wait for ready 
so that we wait until the memory is done reading before we continue. So, assuming that memory finished reading, we then know that we want to write that data back onto the main bus so we can send it back into the MAR to perform our second memory read. So, to get onto the main bus, we can see there's a line coming out this way over to the MDR so that then we could write onto the bus and back into the MAR. So, if we want to write into the MDR, we can see that there's two separate lines going into the MDR and it's not shown in this diagram, but there is an invisible multiplexer right about here, which decides whether we're taking the line from the bus or the line from memory to write into the MDR. In our case, we want to take the data from memory to write into the MDR, so we need to assert that the MDR mux selects memory. So that'll let the line, so that's the next signal we need to assert, MDR mux selects memory. And that'll let this line from memory, or our data from memory from our first read, go to the MDR mux. The next thing we need to assert is load.mdr. That'll let us write into the MDR. With that, we want to get that data onto the main bus, so we then need to assert gate.mdr, which will let that data go onto the main bus. So you can see the next signal is gate.mdr. After we get that data onto the main bus, you can see that it can travel along, and we want to go back into memory, because remember, we need to perform two memory reads. We just did our first one, so we just did this innermost memory read, which got us our effective address. Now we need to do our final memory read. So here we send the contents of our first memory read around the main bus and into the MAR again, so that we can once again tell memory that we want to read at that other location. So we once again just perform load.mar as our next signal, and then you're essentially repeating what you did before. We do a load.mar to show memory where we're reading. We then tell memory to enable and read. So we have mem.enable reading, and we say wait for ready as per usual with memory. We then once again have to tell the MDR mux to select memory as our next signal, load.mdr one more time, and then you do gate.mdr one more time, which will let us write the contents of our second memory read onto the main bus. And then with that, you can see we want to write it into the destination register. So all we have to do is send the contents of that second memory read around the main bus over to the register file so that we can do our final memory read with load.reg. So with that, this is one of the longest instructions, but that is LDI. Okay, so let me turn pages here. The next instruction we're going to be doing is LDR. So for LDR, you can see here what we want to do is we want to access memory at the location of we have the contents of IR 8 through 6. So what that is saying is we want to access memory at the contents of this base register right here, plus so the sign extension of IR bits 5 through 0, and so that's going to be plus the contents of this PC offset 6. So just remember, for LDR, we're doing a base register plus an offset. So here, the first thing that we need to do is that we need to get the base register and add it to the sign extension of IR bits 5 through 0, and that'll get us our effective address. What we want to do, what we want, what we're going to do is we know that IR bits 8 through 6 corresponds with our base register, which also corresponds with SR1 out, since SR1 is normally pointing at IR bits 8 through 6. So right here, we know we want to take SR1 and we want to add it to IR bits 8 through 0 sign extended. So if we follow SR1 right here, we can see that it goes down, and we can either go to the ALU or over to that address adder that we've been using for all of our other data movement instructions. So we want to go over to this address adder. So if we follow SR1 right here, it'll go up this way into the address 1 mux. So the first signal we have to assert is that address adder Adder 1 mux selects SR1 out. That'll let this contents from SR1 go through this adder 1 mux into the address adder. The next thing we need to get is the sign extension of bits IR 5 through 0. Sorry, I think before I said 8 through 0, I meant 5 through 0. So here, we want to get bits I, sign extended of IR 5 through 0 and add them to what we recently got from SR1. So we see the IR right here. If we follow its line going up, we can see that we can get its bits 5 through 0 right here and sign extend them, which is what we want to do. And then we can send them over through the adder 2 mux. And so since we hit a multiplexer, then we know that the next signal we have to assert is that adder 2 mux selects the sign extension for bits I, for IR 5 through 0. That'll let this line from the IR that we want 
go through this multiplexer into the address adder. The adder will then perform the addition between those two, so between the contents of our base register, or the contents of SR1, and the contents of sign extension IR5 through 0. That result will come out this way, and we know we want to go write it into the MAR, so we can access memory at that location. So you can see it's going to come up out of the address adder. We want to send it through the MAR MUX. So here we see we can assert MAR MUX selects the address adder. That'll let our contents from our address adder go through the MUX. And then to get onto the main bus, we need to assert gate.mar MUX. That'll let us write that contents onto the main bus. Following the line around the main bus then, we can go over to the MAR with our effective address that we created. We then want to put our effective address into the memory address register, or the MAR. So we then assert the signal load.mar, which lets us write our effective address into the MAR, so we can tell memory where we want to read from. So, as I said, load.mar right there. And then the next signal we want to give is memory enable for a read. Oh, sorry, I just hit my setup here. There we go. So we're then going to give the signal for memory... Let me fix this real quick. Sorry, guys. Long video. Okay. Great. Okay, sorry about that. So the next signal we need to give is memory.enable for a read, right here, memory enable for a read. And since we're reading from memory, we need to wait for memory to finish reading. So you can see the next thing we write is that we wait for memory to be ready. And once again, that is not a signal, that is just saying we need to wait for memory to be done reading. So, now that we've read from memory at the effective address that we got, we just need to write it over into the destination register in the register file. So we see that we want to go out of memory through the MDR, up the main bus, and over to the register file. So if we follow this line going out of memory, we can see that it goes to the MDR just like we want. But since the MDR has two separate lines going into it, one from the main bus and one from memory, there's actually an invisible multiplexer that isn't on this diagram that we need to tell that we want to send the data from memory. So you can see here, the next signal we give is that MDR MUX selects memory. That'll let that invisible multiplexer send the data from memory over to the MDR. So now that we're sending the contents from our memory read over to the MDR, we need to write it into the MDR by using load.mdr, which means we can see here load.mdr. After we load into the MDR, we need to get onto the main bus. So if we follow this line going out, we see we hit it. We see that we hit a gate, so we need to assert gate.mdr right there. After that, once we write onto the main bus, we want to send it over to our destination register. So if we follow it like that, we hit the register file, and the last thing we have to assert is load.reg. So there's load.reg. And so with that, those are all the control signal sequences and the register transfer description for an LDR. Okay. Moving on to the next instruction, we're going to be doing store. Okay, so for store, here's our register transfer description. And you can see what we're going to be doing is we're going to be writing the contents of a source register into memory at the location of an effective address, which we get with PC relative addressing, which is the contents of the PC plus the sign extension of IR bits 8 through 0. So what we want to do first now that we understand the register transfer description, we know the first thing we want to do is calculate our effective address and go and access memory, or get our effective address ready so that we can then write into memory for a store. So let's start by getting this PC plus sign extension of IR bits A through 0. So if we look at our data path right here, we can see the PC, and we want to add it with the sign extension of IR bits A through 0. So here's the IR. And if we follow it up here, we see there's IR bits 8 through 0, which we can sign extend. And we can send both the PC and the contents of that IR over to this address adder. So now that we know where we want to go, let's go over to our PC. And if we follow its line going up right here and around, we can see that we can send it over through this adder 1 mux to get it to that address adder. So the first signal we have to assert is that address 1 mux selects the PC. Sorry, adder 1 mux selects the PC. So there, adder one mux selects the PC, which lets it go to the address adder. The next thing we have to do is get the contents of IR bits eight through zero sign extended and through the adder two mux. So the next signal we have to give since we hit a mux is that the adder two mux selects the sign extension of bits IR eight through zero. So that'll let this contents from the IR 
8 through 0, go through the adder 2 mux, which will let it go into our address adder. After that, we know that we will have added the P contents of the PC plus the sign extension of bits IR bits 8 through 0. With that, we can see that it will come out of this adder, this address adder, and we want to send it over to the MAR so that we can tell memory where we want to access. So, to do that, we know that we have to send it onto the main bus. So if we follow this line going out of our address adder, we hit the MAR mux. So then the next signal we have to assert is MAR mux selects the address adder. That'll let the contents of that address addition that we did go through the MAR mux. Then to get it onto the main bus, we're going to have to assert the signal gate.MAR mux. So we have here gate.MAR mux to write it onto the main bus. Now that we've got that contents on the main bus, if we follow it down and around the main bus, we can go into the MAR. And so to write our address into the MAR, we know that we need to assert load.MAR, which is that signal right there. So with that, we've successfully put the address where we're accessing memory into the MAR, which will tell memory where we're going to access it. So now that we've got our address set up for, for our store, let's go and get our data set up, so this source register data, set up so that we can actually write it into the memory. So to do that, we know that our source registers data is going to come from the register file, and we know that to write data into memory, we need to put the data into the MDR first, and that will let us write it into memory. So our goal now is to send the source registers data over to the MDR so it can be written into memory. So we see here that for the source register, the next signal we have to give, we, so, okay. We need to get our, the contents of the source register onto the main bus. So to do that, we're going to have to send data through SR1 and then perform a pass through on the ALU to send it onto the main bus. Now, the thing to note is that SR1 normally gets its which register you're talking about from IR bits 8 through 6. However, in this case, we can see that the bits for our source register right now come from IR 11 through 9. So, there's another hidden multiplexer right here on SR1 that we need to tell it to select IR bits 11 through 9 so that it gets the source register from bits 11 through 9 since we're doing the store. So, the next signal we have to assert is that the source register 1 mux selects IR bits 11 through 9. That'll let the decoder for source register 1 know that it's working with these bits from source register from IR bits 11 through 9. That'll let it know which register we're using as our source register to get our data to write into memory. So after we tell SR1 mux to select IR bits 11 through 9, we can then follow this line coming out of SR1 and going into the ALU. We know that we don't want to perform any operation on that data, so what we want to do is just pass it through the ALU. So with that, we need to tell the ALU K to select pass through. That'll let our data from SR1 just pass straight through the ALU. So with that, we have our data from our source register going through the ALU and we just have to get it onto the main bus. So the next signal we have to assert is gate.alu. That'll get our data onto the main bus. After that, it'll travel along the main bus and we just have to get into the MDR. So we can see here that to write into the MDR, there's this line right here, but there's also another line going to the MDR from memory. The MDR actually has a secret invisible multiplexer, just like SR1 had, that is right about here that selects whether or not you're choosing data from memory or whether or not you're choosing data from the bus. So the next signal we have to give after we did the gate.alu is that we need to tell that MDR mux to select the bus. So we're telling the MDR to take data from this line right here, from the bus, since that's where we put out the contents of our source register. So with that, now that that data is flowing to the MDR, we know that we need to just do load.mdr to let it write into the memory data register. Then, once we're at that point, we know that we have our address set up correctly in the MAR, we have our data set up correctly in the MDR, and all we have to do is write it into memory. So all we have to do is say memory.enable w for a write. And so we don't have to wait for memory to, to be ready there because we can just start our next instruction while memory finishes up the writing. But there we go. So that is how you would perform a store instruction. Okay. Let's go and do STI now. 
this is like a longer version of store, where instead of accessing memory once, we access memory twice. So to start, what we're going to do is we see here that we want to get PC plus sign extension of IR bits 8 through 0, access memory at that location, and then we want to access memory at the data we get from our first memory access, and then write the contents of SR into that location of memory. So let's start by getting our effective address or getting the stuff in this innermost brace. So as per usual, we're going to start by getting the contents of the PC and adding it to the sign extension of IR bits 8 through 0. We can see here that here's the PC. If you follow this line coming out of the PC, we can know we can send it to the address adder, which is right here. To get the contents of the PC into the address adder, we have to say that adder 1 mux selects the PC. That's the first signal we have to give. Once adder 1 mux has selected the PC, we then want to get this sign extension of IR bits 8 through 0. So you can see here, here's the IR. And if we follow it up right here, we can see there's bits 8 through 0 from the IR. They get sign extended just like we want them to. They get sent up to the adder 2 mux, which will eventually let them go to the address adder, which is what we want. So the next signal you have to give is that adder 2 mux selects the uh, sign extension of IR bits 8 through 0. So right there we can see adder 2 mux selects sign extension of IR bits 8 through 0. So that'll let our contents from our PC and our contents from the sign extension of IR bits 8 through 0 to go through the address adder. And we know we want to send those over to the main bot to the MAR so that we can perform our first memory access right there. So if we follow that, we see that it comes up this way. We have to go through the MAR mux to eventually get it onto the bus. So the next signal we have to give is gate.mar mux. After that, we can see that it will go through the MAR mux. And we, if we want to write it onto the main bus, we know that we have to assert gate.mar mux. Sorry, I might have said that wrong. The MAR mux needs to select the address adder when it hits the MAR mux. After that, we'll be able to send our data from the address adder onto the bus, which we do using gate.marmux. So with that, and we have our first address, we have this PC plus sign extension of IR bits 8 through 0 on the main bus. We send that around the bus and over to the MAR so we can tell memory where we're accessing it. So to write into the MAR, we see here that we have to assert load.mar, which you can also see right there. With that, we've got our first address written into the MAR, and all we need to do is perform a read from memory, get that contents of our first read, put it back into the MAR to set up our second address to access memory. So, okay, so we have our address inside the MAR. What we want to do then is we want to say memory.enable for a read, right here, memory.enable for a read at the very bottom of the page. That'll tell memory that we're reading from it for the first time. That'll get us this memory access right there. After, when we read from memory, we need to tell memory, we need to remember to say wait for ready. This isn't a control signal, but it's something that we have to write because memory takes longer to read than other things that we do within the LC3 take. So once memory finishes reading, we can see that we want to write it into the MDR so we can get it onto the bus and back to the MAR so we can perform that second access. So if we follow this line coming out of memory, you can see that it goes into the MDR, but you can notice that there are two lines going into the MDR. So there's actually an invisible multiplexer that isn't represented in this diagram that those two lines have to go through before going into the MDR. So that's called the MDR mux, and we need to tell it to select memory. So you need to say MDR mux selects memory. That'll let this line go into the MDR. So here, MDR mux selects memory. After that, we want to write into the MDR. So we do load.mdr. Then we want to write that data onto the main bus. So you can see we have to go through this gate. So we need to assert gate.mdr. That'll let the contents from our first memory read go onto the main bus. And then we know that we want to send it back to the MAR so that we can set up our address for the second memory access. So. The next signal we give after we wrote our contents onto the main bus is simply load.mar. So with that, we've successfully set up our effective address for the STI instruction. Now we just need to get the contents of this source register and go and write it into memory. And to do that, we're going to take the contents of the source register and send it onto the main bus so we can send it into the MDR so we can write it into memory. 
So to do that, the first thing we need to do, and the first thing we need to note, is that within the machine code for this instruction, we can see that source register is dictated by a bits 11 through 9. So normally source register 1 is determined by bits 8 through 6 of the machine code for an instruction. So since we're using different bits than normal, there's actually a multiplexer right here, just like the other invisible multiplexer that we had before, which selects which bits from IR that we're using for the SR1. That multiplexer is called the SR1 MUX, and we need to tell it to select bits IR 11 through 9. That way, we know that we're taking our source register from these bits right here. So, the next signal we have to give is that SR1 MUX selects bits IR 11 through 9. That'll let it know which source register we're using to send out of this SR1 out. So, after we set up that, we can follow the contents of this SR1 moving down the page and going into the ALU. We know that we don't want to perform any operation on this data, we just want to pass it through the ALU so we can put it into the MDR. So, we need to tell the ALUK to select, where are we right now? ALUK selects pass through. That'll let the contents of SR1 just pass straight through the ALU with no operation being performed on them. So, as I said, the next signal was ALUK selects pass through. After that, the contents of that pass through, or the contents of the source register, go down here, and we know we want to write them onto the main bus. So, the next signal we have to give is gate.alu. We can see it's gate.alu right here. It's supposed to be gate.alu. Um, so we have gate.alu, which lets it write onto the main bus. Then we can follow the main bus, and we know we want to write it into the MDR so that we can access memory at that, or we can write into memory with that content. So we send our data from our source register down the main bus and over to the MDR. As I described previously, there's a multiplexer right here which selects whether we're writing from memory or from the bus. In this case, we need to tell the MDR MUX to select the bus, since that's where we want the data to go from to write into the MDR. So that'll let so our next signal, as I said, is MDR MUX selects bus. That'll let the contents of the bus or the contents from that source register go into the MDR. After that, we just do load.mdr to write it into the MDR. And then all we need to do is write it into memory. So if we follow this line right here, that'll let it go to memory. And we just need to perform memory.enableW for a memory enable for a write. And with that, that is the STI instruction. It's one of the longest instructions. And so I'm glad that's out of the way. Okay, so let's go and do our last data movement instruction, which is the STR instruction. So for STR, if we look at the register transfer description, we can see that we're going to be doing the contents of IR bits 8 through 6, which that is just referring to. We're taking the contents from a base register and adding a PC offset 6, or the sign extension of IR bits 5 to 0. With that, since we're doing a base register plus an offset, that's where we're accessing memory, and then we're just going to be writing the contents of a source register into that memory location. So, as per usual, let's try and get the effective address first. So the first thing we want to do is set up this base register. And we want to send it over to the address adder so that we can add it to the sign extension of bits 5 through 0 or the PC offset 6. So this base register, we know it's going to come from the register file. So what we want to do is if we look at the register file right here, SR1 has a line that can go to that address adder that we have right here, which we've been using previously for all of our other data movement instructions. So the first thing we need to note is that the base register, that there's a secret multiplexer on SR1 which selects which bits of our machine code are used to determine which register we're accessing with SR1. In our first case, since we want to access this base register right here, we know we need to tell that SR1 MUX to select IR bits 8 through 6, which are these bits right here for the base register, IR bits 8 through 6. So the first signal we have to give is for an invisible multiplexer right here that's not represented in this diagram. And we need to say SR1 MUX selects IR bits 8 through 6. That'll let it select this base register for its first SR1 access. So now that we've selected the base register to be coming out of SR1, if we follow the line coming out of SR1, we can see that we can send it over this way so we can get it to the address adder. The thing that it hits while going there 
though, is the address one or adder one mux. So the next signal we have to give is that adder one mux selects the SR1 out. That'll let the data from the SR1 or the data from our base register go through this adder one mux over to the address adder. So as I said, our signal was adder one mux selects SR1. The next signal we need to give is we need to go get that sign extension of IR five through zero. So let's go find the IR, it's right here. And to get IR five through zero, we can see that that is right there. So if we follow IR up this way, it hits that five through zero, which is what we want. It gets sign extended just like we want it to. And then it gets sent over to the adder to mux, which will let it go to the address adder. So the next signal we have to give since we hit a multiplexer is that the adder to mux selects the sign extension of bits five through zero. So the adder to mux is selecting this line right here from the IR to be sent through to the address adder. With that, we'll be adding the contents of the base register plus the contents of the sign extension of IR bits five through zero together. That gives us our effective address. We then want to send that over to the MAR so that we can access memory at that location. So we know we have to go onto the main bus. So if we follow the address adder going out this way, we can see there's an MAR MUX, which will eventually let us right onto the main bus. So going through the MAR MUX, whew, going through the MAR MUX, since we hit a multiplexer, we know that the next signal we have to give is MAR MUX selects address adder. So we're saying the MAR MUX selects this line coming from the address adder to send through. Once we send the contents of our address adder through this way, to write it onto the main bus, we need to assert gate.marmux. So we see here, gate.marmux. With that, we've then written our effective address onto the main bus. Following the main bus around, we can see that it gets sent over here to the MAR. To write it into the MAR so that we can tell memory where we're gonna be accessing it, we know that we need to assert load.mar or this signal right here. So we assert load.mar. So with that, we've successfully set up the address which we're going to be accessing or writing into memory at. The next thing we want to do is get the contents of this source register so that we can write it into that memory location. So once again, as we did with all of the other store instructions, we're going to be getting our source register contents from SR1, sending it onto the main bus, over to the MDR, and then writing into memory. So to do that, to start, as we said before with this instruction, there's a secret multiplexer here that's not shown in this diagram called the SR1 MUX, which we need to tell it to select these bits, bits 11 through 9, for its source register, since those are the bits we now want to access. So the next signal we need to give, as I said, is SR1 MUX selects bits IR 11 through 9. That'll let SR1 choose that it's working with these source register bits, 11 through 9. Okay, so now that we have SR1 MUX set up so that it is sending, it is holding the contents of our source register, if we follow this line coming out of the SR1, or coming out of SR1, we want to pass it through the ALU and onto the main bus so we can get it over to the MDR and into memory. So, if we follow the line coming out of SR1, it hits the ALU. We know we don't want to perform any operation on it, we just want to pass it through. So you need to say ALUK, which is right there selects pass through. That'll let the contents of SR1 pass straight through the ALU. With that, the contents of SR1, or the contents of our source register go through the ALU. And to write it onto the main bus, we see that we need to assert gate.alu. So the next signal we give is gate.alu. That lets it write onto the main bus. The next thing we wanna do is write it into the MDR right here. As we know from our previous instructions, that is, we know, that since there are two separate lines going into the MDR right here, there is actually another invisible multiplexer that isn't represented by this diagram that is essentially right here, which selects whether or not the thing writing into the MDR is memory or whether it's the bus. So in our case, we wanna write the contents of the bus into the MDR. So we need to tell that invisible unrepresented multiplexer called the MDR MUX to select the bus. So the next signal we give, as I said, is MDR MUX selects the bus. That'll let our contents from our source register go into the MDR. Once it's written into the MD once it's going to the MDR, we want to write it into the MDR. To write into a register, we need to assert the load, the load signal. So here we have load.mdr. That'll let it write into the MDR. After that, we just want to write that 
the contents of our source register or the contents of the MDR into memory. And to do that, we know we just assert memory.enable for write. So memory.enable w will let us write the contents that we got from our source register, put into the MDR, it'll let it write into memory. So memory enable write. So with that, we're done with our data movement instructions and we can move on past that. We're done with SDR. So the next instruction we're gonna do is jump. Okay, so now that we're on jump, we're on the other, we're, on, we're into the control instructions. So the unique thing about control instructions is that they all write into the PC. So the PC is right here on the data path, and we know that the PC, it refers, it's called the program counter, and it always points at where our next instruction is in memory. So control instructions always write into the PC because control instructions always change where our next instruction is in memory. So in this case for jump, we wanna write the contents of our base register into the PC. That's our register transfer description. So we know that we're, the first thing we want to do is just get the contents of this base register right there and then write it into the PC. So we know to get a base register, we go and get it from the register file and we know that we want to send it through SR1 so we can send it over to the PC. So what we're going to do is we know that there's a secret multiplexer right here. Oh wait, sorry. We don't actually need to assert that multiplexer because SR1 is normally selecting bits eight through six, so we don't need to worry about it right now. Essentially, what we need to do is, so since SR1 is already normally decoded from IR bits eight through six, that is our base register here anyways, so we can just follow this line coming out of SR1 since it will hold the contents of our base register. And we see that we can follow it up this way and that'll let it go to the address adder. No. I know we don't want to add any, we don't want to change this address coming from our base register, but as you can see here, we can send one of our inputs for the address adder be SR1, and the other input we can give is just the value zero, the 16-bit zero value for the other thing, so that our base register's contents won't be affected at all. So that's what we're gonna do. So we send our contents out of SR1 over this way into the address, into the adder one mux, so the first signal we have to assert is adder one mux selects SR1 out. So you can see here, adder one mux is selecting SR1 out. That'll let the contents of our base register go over into the address adder. The other thing we need to then select is we need to make this zero be the other input to the address adder. So we know that if we follow the line from the zero going up this way, we hit the adder two mux. So the next signal we assert is adder two mux selects zero. That'll let the zero go through the adder two mux. With that, the zero gets added to our base register, which does nothing. Then we just wanna send that content over to the PC, which is right here. So if we follow the line coming out of the address adder, we can see that there's the PC mux right there. So we can do PC mux selects the address adder. That'll let it go through the address, that'll let it go through the PC mux. And then we just wanna write it into the PC. So the signal we assert then is load.pc. And that will perform the jump instruction. Okay, so the next instruction we're performing, and we're almost done here, is the branch instruction. So what branch does is it decides whether or not to jump to an ad to a address based on whether or not this NZP condition code is met. So if we look over at the data path, just so you guys know, here is NZP. Those determine whether or not you have a negative, zero, or positive number most recently on the bus. Okay, so if we were thinking about the register transfer description for this, since we know it's a control instruction, we know that it's going to be writing into the PC. And in this case, for the branch instruction, we know that it does PC relative addressing. So what, it's, what it is writing into the PC is if, it, if the condition is met, it writes the contents of the PC plus a sign extension of IR bits eight through zero, just like we did many times for memory access. So in this case, the register transfer description says, we're writing into the PC, the contents of the PC plus sign extension IR bits eight through zero, if and only if you have the condition met, whatever your condition is. So we're making sure that whatever condition we have is met, and if it is met, then we do this register transfer description. Okay. So now that we understand the register transfer description, 
Let's assume that that, is, that condition is met and let's do the control signal sequence. So the first thing we want to do is just get this address like we always do. So we want to get PC plus sine extension of IR bits A through zero. So we know that the PC is up here. If we follow the line coming out of the PC, it can go over into the adder one mux so that we can send it over to the address adder. So we know that since we hit a mux, we need to assert its signal. So we're going to assert adder one mux selects PC. That'll let the contents of the PC, as I said, go through this adder one mux into the address adder. With that, we need to go get the sign extension of IR bits A through zero. So here's the IR. If we follow that line going up and over, we see IR bits eight through zero get sign extended, which is what we want. Those then get sent into the adder two mux. So we need to assert adder two mux select sign extension of IR bits eight through zero. That'll let that that'll let the sign extension of IR bits eight through zero go through this adder two mux into the address adder. They'll get added together, and then what we want to do is send them over to the PC so that they get written into the PC. So we can see here. There's a line coming out here going to the PC mux. So we just say PC mux selects address adder. They get they go through the address adder. And then we just need to load.pc to write them into the PC. And you can see here you only load.pc if that condition is met. So if these NZP condition codes are met, you load.pc. Okay, so that's branch. That's a good thing that was a short instruction. Okay. So the next instruction we have, and we're almost done here, is JSR. So for JSR, this is jump to sing a jump, just like we did previously with jump. But in this case, we've got to make sure that we store where we came from into R7. So you can see here for the register transfer description, whenever doing a JSR or JSRR instruction, we need to make sure that we write the contents of the PC into R7 and then after that perform our actual jump, which in this case would be jumping from, it's sort of PC relative addressing here. We're jumping from PC plus sign extension of IR 10 through zero this time, since we have a lot more bits to work with, this PC offset 11. We're gonna be writing that into the PC to actually change our next instruction. So we can see here, what we wanna do is, first let's try and get the contents of PC into R7. So let's do that first. So here, we can see here's the PC inside of our data path. So if we follow the PC going up, we can write it onto the main bus. So our goal, as I said, we're writing PC into R7. So here's the register file, which holds R7, and there's the PC. So to write the PC into R7, we gotta send it onto the bus and then over to the register file. So to get the PC onto the main bus, we gotta assert gate.pc right here, gate.pc. That'll let the contents of the PC get onto the main bus. And if we follow that down here, it'll go into the register file. Once it goes into the register file to write it into R7, we actually need to work with a hidden multiplexer, which we know we all love. So in this case, this, this diagram does not represent this multiplexer, but there's actually a secret multiplexer right here at the destination register decoder, which decides which destination register you're using. Since for JSR, we always write into R7, that one of the inputs to that hidden multiplexer is 111, which is seven in binary. So we need to tell the DR mux to select 111 so that the DR mux selects R7 that we're writing into. So the next signal we have to give, as I said, is DR mux selects 111. That'll say that the, the destination register is writing into R7. Okay, so once the destination register is set up so that we would write into R7, we need to assert load.reg so that we write that contents of the PC into R7. So we assert load.reg. Great. So we successfully stored the PC into R7. So the next thing we need to do is take the contents of the PC, add it with the sign extension of IR bits 10 through 0, and then write that into the PC. So let's go find the PC. There it is again. If we follow the line from the PC, we know we want to go over to the address adder, which is over this way. It goes through this adder one mux right here. So we know the next signal we have to assert is adder one mux selects PC. Once the adder one mux selects the PC, that'll let it go over to the adder. The net other thing we need to get is IR, which is right here, bits 10 through zero. So if we follow IR this way, it hits bits 10 through zero. You can sign extend them and send them through the adder two mux. 
Since we hit a multiplexer, the next signal we have to assert is adder two mux select sign extension of IR bits 10 through 0. Then we have the PC and sign extension of IR bits 10 through 0 going into this address adder. They get added together, and we know that we want to write them into the PC. So if we follow this line right here, it goes over to the PC mux. So that since we hit a multiplexer, we have to assert the signal PC mux selects address adder. So since PC mux selected address adder, we then can write it, send it over to the PC, and to write it into the PC, we know we need to assert load.pc. So with that, we're done with the JSR instruction. Oh boy. Whew, getting tired here. Okay, so let's do JSRR now. Okay, so right here I know that it says JSSR. I think it is supposed to say JSRR, referring to jump to subroutine using a register rather than using that PC relative addressing. So in this case, we're going to ignore this control signal sequence since this is the control signal sequence used by the LC3. So just pay attention to this one. I apologize that this one is also there. Probably should have crossed it out or something. Okay. So as with JSR, the first thing we want to perform is that we want to write the contents of the PC into R7. That'll store where we came from so that we can eventually return back from where we came from. So in this case, let's go and do that first. So here we have the PC and we want to write its contents into R7. And we know that R7 is in this register file right here. So we want to get the contents of the PC over to the register file. So if we follow the, con the line from the PC moving up, we see there's gate.pc. So the first signal we're going to assert uh, down here is gate.pc. That'll let us write the contents of the PC onto the main bus. <coughs> Once we have the contents of the PC on the main bus, it'll go over to the register file. And then we know we want to always write into R7. So there's actually a secret hidden multiplexer that is not represented in this diagram over on the destination register decoder right here called the DR mux. The DR mux needs to, in this case, select bits 111 so that we tell it to write into R7. So all we need to do is say that DR mux selects 111 so that'll let it, the destination register know that that's where we want to write into, into R7. Once we have that register set up or the destination register set up, we know that all we have to do then is load.reg and that will have written the contents of the PC into the register file. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to write the contents of this base register into the PC since that's how JSRR works. We take the contents of a register and write it into the PC to perform our jump. Okay, so we know to get a base register, all we have to do is take the contents of SR1, because we've done this before, send it over to the address adder, and then write it into the PC. So what we'll do here is we have SR1. It currently holds the contents of our base register, so we can just follow it straight down and over here. And we know that we hit this adder1 mux, so we have to assert the signal adder1 mux selects SR1 out. That'll let the contents of our base register or the contents of SR1 go through the adder 1 mux into the address adder. And we know that we don't want to affect this base address at all. We're not adding anything into it. So what we're going to add into it then is 0 so that it's unchanged. So here we have 0 has to go through this adder 2 mux and into that address adder. So the next signal we have to do is say that adder 2 mux or this guy selects that 0 value that we had before. That'll have our base register plus zero, which will mean that we just have base register. And with that, all we have to do is send it over to the PC to write it into the PC like we want to. So if we follow it up this way, we see we hit the PC mux. So since we hit a multiplexer, we have to assert a signal. So in this case, we're gonna say PC mux selects the address adder. So that'll take the data from the address adder and send it through the PC mux. Once we do that, we know we just have to write into the PC, and to write into the PC, we know we assert load.pc. Okay, so that was JSRR. Woo! Okay. Last instruction, and this one's the weirdest, and I'm going to assume that you guys are good on the trap vector for this. You guys are hopefully going to get more information on this during lecture, and if you want to know more about it, look it up in your textbook. But essentially, what we want to do for trap Trap is when you're doing all of your instructions like get C and stuff like that. So, trap, just like JSR and JSR, 
first start off by writing into R7 so that we can eventually return back to where we last, where we wanted to return to. So we're going to write the contents of the PC into R7. The next thing we want to do for trap is we're actually going to write where in the trap vector we are accessing. Once again, if you want to know about, more about the trap vector, check your textbook, go to lecture, all that sort of stuff. Uh, because I don't have time in this video, it's already stupid long. Okay, so anyways, so for the trap instruction, we want to take the location in the trap vector where we want to access, which is IR bits 7 to 0, and we want to access memory at that location and eventually write that into the PC. This will let us jump, essentially, over to where we are accessing the trap vector so we can perform that specific trap instruction, such as get C. Okay. So, since we know the register transfer description, let's go and get the control signal sequence. So we're done. <laughs> okay, so to start, we see that we want to write the contents of the PC into R7. And we've done this multiple times. So we all know how to do it. We find the PC right here. If we follow this line going up the PC, we know we want to get it over to the register file. So if we follow it up, we, need, we know we need to assert gate.pc. So the first signal we assert is gate.pc. That lets us write the contents of the PC onto the main bus. After that, if we follow the main bus over here, we see we can go to the register file. But wait, we need to tell it which destination register to write into. Since this is a control instruction and we always write into R7, we know that there's a secret multiplexer here on DRMUX, or on the destination register decoder, which decides which bits from the IR we use for the destination register. In this case, we want to tell the DRMUX, so that multiplexer is not represented in this diagram, I apologize for that. But essentially, we need to say drmux selects bits 111, so it selects R7. So here, we're telling the invisible drmux multiplexer to select 111. So now that we have the dr, the destination register set up to be R7, we can just load.reg to write the contents of the PC that was on the main bus into the register. Great. So we wrote PC into R7. Now all we have to do is set up this zero extension of IR bits 7 through 0, and then access memory at that location, and then write that content into the PC. So, let's go do that. Okay. Whew, okay, so, cool. Let's go and get this IR 7 through 0 and 0 extended. So here we see the IR right here, and if we follow it this way, we can see that there's the zero extender of 7 through 0, so if we want to, we can send it through that zero extender and over to the MAR MUX. So since we hit a multiplexer, we know that the next signal we have to give is MAR MUX selects zero extension of IR bits 7 to 0. So that will send IR 7 through 0, 0 extended through the MAR MUX. With that, we know we want to write it onto the main bus, so we can eventually get it over to the MAR to access memory there. So, to get this onto the main bus, we see that we have to assert gate.marmux. So here, the next signal we assert is gate.marmux. Following that, we're on the main bus, and if we follow it around, we know we want to go to the MAR so we can access memory at that location. So, the next signal we want to give is simply load.mar, and that will let us write the zero extension of IR bit 720 into the memory address register, which will tell memory where we're accessing it. So with that, we then can follow this line going into memory. We know we want to do a read from memory because we're trying to read memory at that location and then write the contents of that read into the PC. So in this case, now that we have the address set up, we want to do memory.enable for a read. Since we are reading from memory, we need to then say wait for ready. This is not a control signal. Simply we're saying we have to wait for the memory to be done reading because memory doesn't read that quickly. So after that, we take the contents of our memory read and we want to eventually get it over to the PC. So we want to get it back up to the PC. But before we can do that, we need to send it through the MDR onto the bus and then all the way back around here over to the PC. So right here, if we follow this line coming out of memory, we see we can go into the MDR. But as we know about the MDR, there is a secret hidden MDR MUX multiplexer that is not represented in this diagram. And it has it because there's one line coming from the bus right here that could write into the MDR, or there's a line coming from memory that could write into the MDR. So we need to select which of these two lines we want to write into the MDR. In our case, we want to choose this line right here. So the next signal we have to give is that MDR MUX selects memory. After the MDR MUX selects memory, we want to write into the MDR. To do that, we know we assert load.mdr. Here's load.mdr. 
Once we've written into the MDR, we need to get it onto the main bus, so we need to assert a gate signal, in this case, gate.mdr. Now that we've written on, we've got our data from memory onto the main bus, we just want to get it over to the PC, so if we follow the main bus around here, we see that if we follow it right here, we can get it over into the PC MUX, which will let, which will let us get it into the PC. So, since we went through here to the PC MUX, since we hit a multiplexer, we know we have to give a PC MUX selects, and we're selecting the bus, since that's where our data came from in this case. And with that, we want to then write it into the PC, so the last signal we need to give is load.pc. And with that, we're done with all the instructions in the LC3. So, I'll just leave this here. Um, the whole point of this was to show you guys how you can derive the control signals just by looking at this data path diagram. I know that it seems difficult. One thing to remember is just first try and remember your register transfer descriptions. And if you'd notice, I was able to know where to go in this data path by knowing the register transfer description and just always trying to get the effective address first. You're always trying to get the content that I'm writing into another thing, right? So just, if you know the register transfer description, you know where to look in this diagram to do things, so you should hopefully be able to derive the control signal sequence. And try not to forget about those hidden multiplexers. It's unfortunate that they weren't represented in this diagram, but yeah. So I hope this video was helpful. I know it was really long. Uh, if you need any more help, shoot me an email or show up to the last few SI sessions. Thank you.